You know, as I look back at my journey from smart home moron <laughs> to guy working at a smart home channel, there are a lot of things that I know now that would have been really helpful when I was starting out. Here are six things I wish I knew before I started automating my home. It's not that difficult unless you want it to be. The idea of automating a home by yourself can be really intimidating to a newbie. There are so many devices and protocols, and it seems that everyone has their own idea of how to do things. Zigby! Z-Way! Zigby! Z-Way! Matter! But the truth is, you can do a lot of really cool things with very little knowledge. Yes, the most complex automations with a multitude of conditional actions and restrictions can require a lot of experience and know-how. But don't let that keep you from getting started. It's like cooking. I'll never have the kitchen skills to cook a beef wellington like Gordon Ramsay. This is rubbish! But that didn't stop me from learning how to cook a hamburger. The basics of home automation are easy to learn and you can have your first devices up and running, honestly, in just a few minutes. From there, you can decide if you want to teach yourself to be a gourmet home automator or just stick with the basics. There's no wrong answer. Just get started and see where it takes you. Nobody cares about your stupid smart home. Impressing my friends and family was not the reason I automated my home. But when you invest a lot of time and money into something cool, you want to show it off, right? Well, let me warn you now. Your friends and family will never be as impressed with your smart home as you are. Bottom line, they just don't care. In the same way you don't care about their boat or hot tub or stamp collection or whatever they're yammering on about all the time, their eyes are going to glaze over pretty quick the second you start talking about your Z-Wave mesh network. This is especially true of your spouse. Well, you may think that when she sees your new motion lighting, she'll be so turned on that she will just rip your clothes off in a fit of passion. But more likely she'll say, that's nice, and go about her day. Sure, there are some automations and devices that she might really think are pretty cool. But I will warn you, if you replace a working switch with an automation that flakes out half the time, you will invoke her passion. And not in a good way. So automate your home because you want to, not because you're trying to impress anyone else. There is no perfect hub. Deciding on your smart home ecosystem is an important decision, but it's not life or death. Because no matter what hub you choose, it's not gonna be perfect. My house runs primarily on the Hubitat Elevation hub, but I've had to add a Hue bridge and Lutron bridge, and it still lacks all of the compatibility that I would really like. Hubs like SmartThings is super easy to set up and use. It's extremely compatible, but it lacks local control, and some of the advanced automations you can do with other hubs. Home Assistant does everything and is perfect. As long as you can quit your job and abandon your family and devote yourself 24 seven to your Home Assistant overlord. And these are just a few of your hub options. So for newbies, do your research, pick a hub that you think will work best for you, but understand that no matter what hub you choose, you will eventually run into some limitations. So don't be afraid to add additional hubs and bridges or even switch your hub completely later on as your needs change. You get what you pay for. I don't like spending money. Every dollar I spend is one dollar farther away I am from retiring and spending my days golfing and complaining about my sore knees. Ow, my knees! So when I started automating my home, I was doing it with the cheapest devices I could find. Well, it turns out cheap devices are generally cheap for a reason. They have fewer features, they can be difficult to connect, they're ugly, instructions if they have any can be almost impossible to decipher. Oh, and they use weird batteries too. Of course, I thought this was normal until I finally invested in some expensive devices and yeah, they're nice. Lutron switches are really expensive, but they look great and they always work quickly and flawlessly. Philips Hue devices are still overpriced in my opinion, but if you have the money, you're not gonna be disappointed with anything they put out. For me, generally the mid-range price devices are the sweet spot. It's where you'll find the best value and the right amount of features for your needs. Now in some prominent places, you might really want those cool additional button taps and LED indicators that only say uh, an Innovelli switch can offer, so don't be afraid to splurge when necessary. But if you're just putting it in a closet, get something reliable and affordable. Wi-Fi sucks. Starting out, you'll be tempted to get a lot of Wi-Fi smart home devices. Don't. I know they're cheap and easy to find, but and some do work very well, but how good is your home Wi-Fi? If you build up a large network of Wi-Fi devices, you'll probably have to upgrade your router. And I don't care how good of a router you get, Wi-Fi devices will still randomly lose connection and miss commands and drive your family nuts, and whenever that happens, they're gonna blame you. 
Oh, and I hope you like mobile apps because each Wi-Fi device has its own app to make your phone even more cluttered than it already is. And let's not forget the biggest issue with Wi-Fi devices is that most of them are cloud-based, meaning if your internet is down or if their cloud server is down, your devices won't work at all. Yes, Wi-Fi devices do serve a purpose. Voice assistants are Wi-Fi based. Uh, I've got an Ecobee thermostat, that's Wi-Fi, I really like that. But for lights and switches and things of that ilk, stick to Zigbee or Z-Wave because when reliability counts, Wi-Fi sucks. Your smart home is never finished. I don't say this like it's a bad thing. I'm just saying while you may have a vision for what your finished smart home is gonna be like, those plans will change. New devices will come out, you'll learn more, You'll want to tweak your automations as you figure out your habits and things. And that's great. I mean, it's fun and exciting. And there's always something new to show off to your family and friends who, as we discussed earlier, do not care. So those are six things I wish I knew when I started automating my smart home. If you have other ideas, please leave those in the comments below so others can see those as well. Again, I am super excited to be joining this channel. We have a lot of stuff planned and we're going to be posting videos every single week moving forward. So if you've not subscribed, please take a, take a second to do so right now. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.